Hi, welcome to Nina in the Kitchen, where I'm going to show you a very different stuffed pepper recipe. If you've had stuffed peppers before, dimes to dollars, you had ground beef and rice. And this has none of that. This is a recipe that my family used all summer long, and it's a great summer dish. And interestingly, I met a, a chef in Abruzzo, Italy. This is the way he makes it. The only difference is he doesn't use egg in his, where my family does. So it must come from somewhere from Rome or, and south. Here we go. The recipe is very, very simple. I have, I'm going to do four stuffed peppers. You want to start with a pan that's going to fit everything very snugly. And for every pepper that you use, you're going to use one egg. These peppers, two of them are rather large. So I have four peppers, but I'm going with five eggs just because of that. Okay, now moving on. I also have what's going to become about a half cup, I would say, of chopped parsley. I haven't chopped it yet. And I have some fresh basil. Some of this basil will go into what's going to be the sauce and the rest of it will go into the stuffing. This is the stuffing. I'm using fresh breadcrumbs today. You don't have to, you can use dry breadcrumbs. You can use the Italian seasoned breadcrumbs if that's what you like. For four peppers, three cups of breadcrumbs. Just tear your bread up, throw it in your blender, throw it in your food processor, give it a whirl, and bingo, you have fresh breadcrumbs. This is a Pecorino Romano cheese. You can use Parmesan, but what's important is that you use a fresh, sharp cheese. Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese. It's easily found, it's uh, very affordable, and it is a big flavor punch. So I'm going with pecorino. So you're going to put about half a cup in your breadcrumbs. The rest of the cheese can be served at the table so that if people want a little extra boost of flavor, you have your cheese. Let me just chop these herbs and I'll be right with you. I'm just going to mix this together before I put the eggs in. And I'm going to put a little salt because nothing else is seasoned. Even though there's cheese in here, you're going to need a little salt in this. And then black pepper. You can do as much black pepper as you like. Again, nothing else is seasoned. We have five eggs going in, so you're going to want to think about that. And now for the eggs. If you're using dried breadcrumbs, what you want to do is think about this like a pancake batter. These are fresh breadcrumbs, so they're not going to hydrate the same way. So you don't need these to be quite, or this batter, to be quite pourable, like a pancake batter would be. But actually, I think I need another egg. Okay, this is exactly the texture that you're going for. It's wet, kind of jelly-like, kind of plops. Okay, and so it is very wet. And this blends with the juices of the peppers. It's delicious. Let me show you what I did with the pepper. I call this the shoulder of the pepper. So you want to get down to where there is no line. So in other words, about half an inch down from the top of the pepper. And then just twist this whole thing. You have this ball of seed. And I go in at an angle right at the base. And you just want to get all of these little ribs out. Tap the seeds out and that is how you make these peppers. Keep your little lid because it looks cute and then just stuff them and you only want to fill these about three quarters of the way. If you fill them more than that um, what can happen is that they split. You don't have to pack this in. Anything that's left over can go into the sauce that you're going to make for this. So just about like that. Now I just have this very little bit left over. So I'm just going to put that right over everything. If some gets on the bottom of the pan, that's okay. Then we have these tomatoes. For this size dish, you can use one or two big beef steaks. But what I do is cut them up. And if you have one that's really very ripe and full and juicy, you can just tear it with your hands and just 
kind of tear it and get it in there. Make sure all of those juices go into the peppers and also at the bottom of the pan. If you don't have beautiful ripe tomatoes, you don't have a farm stand or whatever, you can do this with canned tomatoes. I would do um, a 15 ounce can for this amount of food. Anything more than that, you're gonna have kind of a soup because these also exude juices as they cook. So some of this goes on top, some of it lands on the bottom and you just kind of push it all around like this. I saved the stems from the parsley and also the basil. I wrapped it up in kitchen twine and I'm going to put that in, just kind of nestle that in. That's a good flavor to have. And then I have these um, leaves that I've saved from my basil plant. I'm going to toss that in at the very end. Another good addition here, if you feel like sauteing onion, would be an onion. I wouldn't go garlic because the flavor profile here is sweet. You have sweet from the tomato, you have sweet from the pepper and the basil and the herbs. So no garlic on this one. And then just put these lids back on. And this goes on a medium high heat. When it comes up to a boil, you reduce it to a simmer, put a lid on it and let it go for about 40 minutes. And I'll see you then. I wanted to show you what these look like and how to tell that they're done. First of all, look at all of this moisture that has been coming out of the tomatoes and also the peppers. So the way that you tell that they're done is that these peppers are fork tender. Oops. And they are. And the stuffing is going to be very full and moist. And that's how it looks. Did you see the goo coming from the cheese? <laughs> there was some melty cheese in there. Mmm, who doesn't love that? This has been on for 40 minutes at this point. What I'm going to do is just put this on a skew so that there's some ventilation here and let this bubble down for about another 10 minutes or so is what I'm going to give it. I almost forgot. My favorite part is the basil. So I have these whole fresh basil leaves. They're rather small. I'm just going to push those around, just throw those around and um, let them cook down tomato and basil. What a great flavor. So 10 minutes, I'll see you then. It's 10 minutes later. Let me just pull this out. This is the bundle of fresh herb stems. You know, the stems have a lot more flavor than the leaves. So anytime I can use them, I do. And for something like this, it's just perfect. So there's a little cheesy stuff at the bottom, as well as this, which becomes your sauce. Let me just pour this over. And everyone gets a little bit of sauce and cheese. I think I'll take this one and taste this for you. One thing I love about it is this bread is soft but firm. The pepper has still just, it's uh, al dente, it's just a little crunch to it. It's cheesy and herby. I love this dish, it's so delicious. And if you think about it, you have egg, cheese, those are proteins, and you have a vegetable and also a starch. So it's a complete meal. This is so delicious for a lunch or dinner, easy to make. You put it aside, let it cook away, and go to the beach. Well, can't go for too long. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Let me know if you make it and what you think, and I'll see you again later. Bye, guys.